All right, everybody, we're back for another episode of Think About It Thursday. Before I start, I'd like to give a big shout out to the C's for winning last night, getting ready for the next game. Tomorrow, everybody tune in, support the city, support our troops. But, little Timmy, I got a clip to roll. Roll the first clip, little Timmy. You just tuning in with back to another So if you don't know what you just seen, that was a video of some people creating letters out of chemicals. So for the nature of my topic tonight, I just wanted to start off with that video. Uh, this is another thought-provoking Think About It Thursday on the Still A Man platform. I'm your host, G. Lacey, and today's topic is GMOs and clones. Remember, you are what you eat. In these so-called overpopulated times, the question is, what exactly are we eating? It's hard enough to live in these times and not have to worry about what you're putting in your body. Now, what is a GMO? What is a clone? How do they relate? If you're unfamiliar with this subject, enjoy the show as I gear up to explain just what that is. So what is a GMO? According to Wikipedia, a genetically modified organism is any organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. Now, before I go any further, Here's a clip on GMOs. 18 genetically modified organisms you didn't know about. 18. Featherless chicken. Israeli scientists have created this strange animal, a chicken without any feathers. The weird looking animal is supposedly much cheaper to raise, more environmentally friendly, and doesn't require any feather plucking, which, in general, saves resources. This naked chicken can literally go straight from farm to fridge without much work. While this seems like a great idea, there are still some hurdles to cross, such as the fact that, without feathers, chickens cannot protect themselves from harsh weather and parasites. 
17. Glittering Gold Seahorses Vietnam-based scientists have created a breed of seahorse that is literally worth its weight in gold. Scientists took the fluorescent gene from a jellyfish and inserted it into a tiny grain of gold, which was then injected into the eggs of a seahorse. This glittering gene was absorbed into the cells of the seahorse, and they grew into glittery seahorses that shine in the light. While it seems like a lucrative venture to sell glittery pet fish, the scientists were testing out a technique to replace negative genes with good genes in humans and livestock. 16. Singing Mouse While we usually genetically modify animals and conduct experiments with a direct purpose, the Evolved Mouse Project doesn't really do that. Instead, they add sort of random genes to mice, let them breed, and see what happens. That's how, after mixing mice genes with bird genes, we got singing mice. Baby mice were found inherently to know how to sing from a young age. When other, non-genetically modified mice grew up around the singing mice, they actually learned how to make similar sing-song chirpy noises themselves. 15. Glowfish There is a pet fish whose DNA is patented and trademarked, and that fish is the glowfish. They are genetically modified zebra danio fish that were crossed with the fluorescent proteins of a jellyfish to create fun fish that glow different neon colors. Other glowfish were created by splicing the zebra danio with sea coral and other jellyfish genes. You can own your very own GMO fish in most parts of the United States, except for California. 14. Spare Part Pigs It's pretty common now to use the heart valves from pigs to transplant into human hearts. But now, we can develop pigs that we could take the entire organs from for human transplants. These pigs are used for spare parts and have been designed so that their hearts, livers, kidneys, pancreases, and other organs can be taken whole to be put into humans without our body's immune system rejecting it. 13. Fast Growing Salmon when it comes to sustainable food sources, we usually look towards domesticated animals and plants that we can farm and breed. Salmon is sometimes farmed, but they take a little while to reach maturity. That is, until Aqua Bounty genetically modified the Atlantic salmon with Chinook salmon and a bottom-dwelling eelfish to create a salmon that grows twice as fast and twice as big. 12. Male Tilapia Over the last few years, we have genetically modified tilapia to help them mature faster and grow larger with fewer resources. This would be taken a step further with making sure that more male tilapias are born than female ones. Female tilapia breed by holding eggs in their mouth. During this time, they won't eat anything, which means they end up being smaller. Tilapia farmers prefer bigger fish and thus would rather have more male tilapia than female ones in their farms. 11. Sudden Death Mosquitoes Mosquitoes are one of the biggest proliferators of malaria, resulting in a million deaths and infecting more than 300 million people every year. Scientists began engineering special mosquitoes to combat this by creating mosquitoes that resist the parasite that passes malaria, effectively killing off all mosquitoes. Scientists began engineering special mosquitoes to combat this by creating mosquitoes that resist the parasite that passes malaria and other mosquitoes who would die before reaching sexual maturity, effectively killing off all mosquitoes. The resistant mosquitoes, however, wouldn't be able to resist quickly evolving parasites, and the sudden death ones would risk affecting the entire ecosystem that relies on eating mosquitoes. So, these GMOs are restrained to the labs they were made in. 10. Glow-in-the-dark cats Cats are made vulnerable to a virus that is closely related to HIV called feline immunodeficiency virus. It's a virus that affects feral cats pretty frequently, and there are half a billion cats in the world. In 2011, Japanese and US-based scientists inserted a gene into cats to help them resist feline AIDS, and to make sure that gene was easily visible to the scientists. In 2011, Japanese and US-based scientists inserted a gene into cats to help them resist feline AIDS, and to make sure the gene was easily visible to the scientists, they added a gene that made the cats glow in the dark. So, there are a bunch of super mutant cats out there with disease immunities and the ability to emit a green glow from their skin. <laughs> Did you do this? 9. The ripest and juiciest strawberries you got from the supermarket might contain the genetic traces of a fish. 
Scientists have been experimenting with combining strawberries with the antifreeze genes that are found in cold water fish like arctic char and sea flounders, which help the strawberries resist freezing and dying in bad weather. Luckily, it doesn't create a weird, fishy-tasting strawberry. 8. Glow-in-the-dark rabbit most genetically modified organisms have a specific purpose in mind or a greater goal that usually justifies messing with something's DNA spread. Most genetically modified organisms have a scientific purpose in mind or a greater goal that usually justifies messing with something's DNA spread. However, Edward Keck used genetic engineering for creating works of art rather than for scientific research. His most notorious work was the glow-in-the-dark rabbit named Alba. It sparked a debate about animal rights but Alba died before anything was resolved. 7. Goats spliced with spiders When you think of genetically splicing something with a spider, you usually think of superheroes with spider-themed superpowers. However, in real life, you can find animals that have been genetically combined with spiders. Goats. Spider silk is flexible and strong, and some even want to try and produce it on a larger scale so we can use it to make things like parachute cords. One lab has spliced spider genes with a goat, so that these flexible and strong spider silk genes would be replicated in their milk. This silk milk is also able to create biosteel, a strong web-like material. 6. Golden Rice Rice is a major staple food in many parts of the world, partly because it's cheap and partly because it helps you feel full even when you don't have much to eat. However, the normal white rice isn't very healthy for you. That is why scientists are working on golden rice, rice that was spliced with vegetables like squash and carrots that not only create the golden color, but also include beta-carotene, which is more nutrient-dense and could help prevent blindness in children who eat it. 5. Ear Mouse The most notorious genetically modified animal might be the ear mouse, or the Vacanti mouse, which was created in 1995 by scientists in Massachusetts. The scientists wanted to prove that cartilage structures could be grown on other living creatures before being removed and transplanted into humans who need it. However, this mouse would quickly become famous or infamous as it went on to the Jay Leno show and then used as a mascot by animal rights groups who were opposed to genetic modifications. 4. Scorpion Cabbage The Androctonus australis is one of the most dangerous scorpions in the world with a venom that can cause tissue damage and death. So, of course, we combine the genes from this scorpion with cabbage intended for human consumption. The gene of the scorpion's venom changed when it was spliced with the cabbage. The venom is now only poison to insects, which spasm and die when they try to eat the crop. The same poison is supposedly completely harmless to humans, making it the perfect crop. 3. Anti-Cancer Purple Tomatoes Researchers have also created a tomato that is not only more flavorful, but would also help prevent cancer. The researchers spliced tomatoes with a snapdragon flower to create a deep purple tomato that almost looks like a blackberry. These super tomatoes contain potent antioxidants and inhibit the growth of cancer cells, ease the symptoms of diabetes, and even relieve the pains of growing old. You might just see purple tomatoes on your pizza someday soon. 2. Chinese Dog Pig This image went around the internet with a bunch of people thinking it was some sort of failed chimera of a pig and a dog because of its pink skin and strange tufts of hair. While it was not an animal that was genetically engineered in a lab, it is an animal that has been genetically engineered over generations. This dog, in particular, is the hairless Chinese crested dog, an expensive and rare breed of dog that is highly sought after by some people, even though the winner of the annual World's Ugliest Dog Contest is usually a Chinese crested. 1. Less flatulent cows You might have heard that cows produce an excess of methane, which contributes to the dangerous greenhouse effect. It's hard to make cows stop producing methane since they're some of the most populous domestic livestock in the world and that it's a natural part of their digestive progress. Until we genetically modified cattle to produce 25% less of the bacterium in their digestive tract that creates methane gas. Basically, we made cows fart less. Mm. Okay, that was an interesting video. Why do we think that we are genetically modifying food and things? Patsy, would you like to start? Because we're overpopulated. We're running out Go of ahead, food. Go ahead, Auntie. 
We're overpopulated. We're running out of food sources. Patsy? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, some of the stuff that they were saying was like really weird. You know, it's like, to, like the tomatoes, it's like, why? You know, and the cows, like, every animal they whether it's humans, dogs, or whatever, we all fart. Why Why are they making the cows fart less? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. And yeah. I think they did a little bit more to the cow than just the fart. But yeah. we're going to get into it a little bit later in the show. Um, would anybody else like to speak on the video, Uncle T? You got to unmute your phone if you do want to talk. Did you hear me? Yep, Uncle Rob. Yeah. I do want to say something. Wait a minute, wait a minute Chief. Go Let ahead, me just please. say this. Go ahead, Rob. Um, I'm glad to see that they um, talked about that purple potato because I had it for the first time maybe like three, four oh, weeks no, ago. Oh, no, it was a purple tomato, Uncle Rob. Oh, it was a purple tomato? I thought they said potato. Yep, nah. it was a purple yeah. tomato. Oh, I got to try that then because I never tried it, but I did have the purple um, potato and that was good. So <laughs> I was like, some, if you have one of my salads, you you had a purple tomato. Those are the ones that I try to. I, I don't know for some reason I go into the store and I get the colorful tomatoes, the little small ones. But I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt nobody. And they are sweet. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think I think that uh, if they're doing things like this for 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 science and medical purpose, yeah, if if they're doing it because they want they want everybody else to to gravitate to this this type of stuff that they claim is is good for you and all this. When in actual reality, that is not really that good for you. And they, all of a sudden, they, they come up with a bunch of stuff saying things are not good for you. But then you see that they're still selling this stuff in, in stores, you know, like in, 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 in the poor community. Just, just, that's all you gonna get is this this genetic stuff. But if you go in the rich community or, or or upper class community, they got all this stuff that they claim is that is not good for you. So I think that they're trying to cut you off from the stuff that you've been eating, get you on this this new creative stuff, telling you that is good. And they take the stuff that they've been saying is not no good for you. I would agree with that. Very well put, Uncle T. Um, would anybody else like to speak, Dukes? I I I'm like stuck on silly with the letters, but um, <laughs> I'm like okay, I eat salad, but um, as far as what we just was watching. Yeah, you know, the tomato, and then there is a purple potato. I don't know if that has anything to do with the science. and um, But I just like think it. that what Timmy said, if it's to enhance our health and make us better, you know, because I think health is wealth. But, you know, if it's, it's out there to make us feel better, then I'm, I'm all for it. But if I don't know if it's what reset if it's what my sister said. It's because the population is, you know, enhancing and they can't keep up with us. We we got we got a problem on our hands. What's next? Would anybody else like to speak? Pringle? How you doing tonight, Auntie? Yeah, If you would like to speak, you gotta unmute your phone. So she I'm intrigued. Like to speak on a video, Uncle D. Yeah, go ahead. I'm intrigued. 
Um, I am interested in learning more about the golden rice. I want to see how they're going to infuse it or whatever, how they said they're going to do it. Um, there's been myths about carrots enhancing people's uh, sight and preserving it for centuries. So I'm intrigued, if, if not about anything else, just about the golden rice. The other stuff, I'm not, I really can't get behind that. But the rice, that seems to be the most harmless thing uh, to try. The, those other things, I, I don't know. I, 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 Why do you think that we genetically modify food? Uh, for the same reason Maria said, because uh, the world is overpopulated. Um, America is not just trying to feed America. They're trying to uh, feed other parts of the world. So um, that's part of the reason. And even though some of those places there's uh, using or trying to perfect those experiments, probably are in some of the other parts of the world that we're trying to, we're trying to help. I think China uh, has a, a deep background in uh, doing stuff like that. They, they always seem to be the front runners about our uh, experimental uh, things. So I don't believe that they, it would be any different in this situation. I believe that uh, they're experimenting over there. They're like probably Again, one of the front runners. Yeah, definitely some weird people, and the FDA approves of most of this the stuff that they're giving to us. Well, here's a list of reasons why scientists say they make GMO food. They say that it's tastier food, disease and drought resistant plants that require fewer environmental resources, such as water and fertilizer, less use of pesticides. An increased supply of food with reduced cost of longer shelf life and faster growing plants and animals. Mm. Here's a couple of pros and cons from uh, for GMOs or from um inside from insider.com. My fault. Here's a couple of pros and cons on GMOs from insider.com. Pros of GMOs. Crops are that. Crops that are made more nutrient and grown with fewer pesticides and are usually cheaper than their non-GMO counterparts. The cons of GMOs, foods that are caused with allergic reactions because they're altered DNA and they increase antibiotic resistance. GMOs today, the technology involves inserting DNA into a genome in an organism to produce a genetic gen, genetically modified new DNA transferred into a plant cell. Usually the cells are then grown into tissue culture where they develop into plants. The seeds produced by the plants will inherit the new DNA. So how does this relate to cloning? Mm. Here's well, a definition from Webster. Cloning, to propagate an organism or a cell as a clone of hundreds of new plants cloned, the best ones are selected, to make an identical copy of biochemistry, to replicate a fragment of DNA placed in the organism so that there's enough to analyze and use the protein production. Hopefully you can understand from these definitions and pros and cons that I just read a little bit more of the connection between the two. And if not, here's a clip to further the information. We'll see. Two beautiful Nita Chinese girl. This is the doctor who changed the future of the human race and let the world know on YouTube. He Jian Kui stunned the scientific community with the claim he pushed the boundary no one else had. A line has been crossed that should not have been crossed. It's very disturbing. It's inappropriate. Oh, this is huge. 
He says he genetically edited human embryos, not just for research but for implantation, leading to the world's first births of genetically altered humans, baby girls born in China from embryos designed to be resistant to HIV. For this specific case, I feel it's a I feel proud, actually. The tool used by He called CRISPR is found in labs around the world. It gives us the, the precise way of cutting the gene or putting a little piece of gene in. It's often used by researchers trying to treat incurable diseases. The method itself is very easy. You can use it, everybody can use it now. Leaders in the field of gene editing have collectively agreed it's too early to implant edited embryos in humans because of the risks, the unknowns, and the ethical questions about altering humankind. We're at a hinge of human history. William Hurlbut is a leading American bioethicist who teaches at Stanford University. In the months before the news broke, Dr. Hu consulted with him. Every time we met together, we would talk about the seriousness of the issues and in a sort of stepwise way, what you had to do to make sure that it was done right. But when I heard that there were live-born children from it, I thought, oh my gosh, he just jumped ahead. Hurlbut knew nothing of the plans to implant edited human embryos. Dr. Ho studied at Stanford as a postdoctoral fellow where he worked with leading researchers. Hurlbut describes him as smart, but perhaps too trusting of his own wisdom. He's young, he's inexperienced, and he's, you know, he's from a small uh, rural community in, in China. His research has been shut down by Chinese authorities. It's also raised questions about whether there will be a rash of new regulations to stymie scientific development, or if scientists can regulate themselves. We all want to be first, right? I mean, this is where you really feel that you're making a huge difference and you're getting recognition. Um, but I think in this particular case, the outcry from the community is so huge that I think it will slow things down. His work has already stoked fears about the future, what it could look like, how soon it could come, whether it includes designer babies, and if a tool found in labs around the world could one day make them. Alexandra Field, CNN, Hong Kong. Okay, so if you don't know, that was a clip from CNN talking about a scientist that created babies in a lab, basically, that are resistant to HIV. How do you guys feel about this, this baby-making cloning thing? Anybody like to speak first? What is that? And then, and then it starts with a female. Why? It starts with a female so she could be able to carry the gene on, like to the mills or when she reproduce, have kids and stuff like that. But my question is, where did he get the gene from? His daughter, from his cell? Because you got to get the gene from a human, from somebody. It's a great question. We should look into it. How did you guys feel about cloning babies in general do you guys think this is right do you think that these guys are trying to play the position of god in creation yes germans been doing this shit for a long time yeah They're trying to make a superhuman superpower they've been doing this since hitler it was in rain it's just coming into a whole new different level of energy now that it's coming mass scale everyone's trying to do it they can they can reproduce your whole ear if they want to. They can make a hand. Uh, yes. If you just, uh, you're just joining us. We just seen a couple of clips yeah, about a mouse that they was using. Me, that's made cool. I think that's cool. If you're doing that type of stuff like that for people who don't have hands, people who don't have legs and stuff like that or in this in the air, Somebody, somebody got shot or something in half of their face. So if they can give you the organs that you mission, then that's cool. But when you start saying you're playing God to create it, that's, that's, to me, that's against the, that's against all nature to, to, you know, try to play God and, and, and create things that ain't really supposed to be created. 
You yeah, know what? You... Go on, Patsy. Oh, yeah. I was just thinking, like, years ago, like, in the 80s and 90s, wasn't there, like, at least one or two movies that they they basically, it, it was, like, they, they, they did exactly this. They cloned and bred a, a, um, a kid from... And um, in a in a isolation thing, and it didn't work out good because the, the, there was something wrong with the the child. They, he he or she got into the teens and young adulthood, and there was that person was not normal. Like how we we grow up in society and born. Through the natural way instead of cloning, and you know, yeah, okay, we got crazy, messed up ways, but we're but we're in the normal sense of oddities. I don't, I, I, I don't, I agree with Patsy. I think that I take it a step further. I don't believe that those clones have souls. That's the thing that separates us from animals and other uh, species. So I would dare say that's the one um, factor that's going to be missing from these clones. So what about test tube babies? So, so gosh, hey, just before you, be before you ask that, eyes. Greg. Was, oh, yeah. so, go ahead, Victor. Gee, before you ask that question, um, I want to go back to the, the, um, the pig. When they said they were taking the pig organs and putting in the hearts and everything, I mean, he said they don't have a soul. What are you thinking that that pig's heart is doing, or they probably their liver or their kidneys or whatever they have that they're putting in humans? What are the side effects? Well, I, when I was referring to them not having souls, I'm I was referring to them cloning uh, a, a human as opposed to them adding to the human's uh, gene structure. Like when they, they're doing like transplants and stuff like that, the person is already alive as opposed to the clone. They're creating it. That's not, that's not natural um, birth. They're, 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 they're creating a duplicate of something that already exists, if I'm understanding them correctly. So what about a test tube baby where they're genetically modifying the baby even though they're using the egg and the sperm cell from people? They still have a soul, but they're actually making it out to where they can have the certain it's, it's, still, it's, it's still a part of the natural process. You have the sperm and you have the egg. The clone, I don't believe that it's going through that type of natural process. I think that they're trying to duplicate something that already exists. It's not having like a natural human birth. It's just something that's being created after the fact, after the individual actually exists. Is this here in the living? Very true. Um, is everybody getting a feel for this GMO clone thing? What's going on? I have a question. My question is, so if you're cloning someone, where do it start at? It don't start with you six years old or when a person was 19. They, they're making a fetus, ain't they? Well, uh, actually, some information on it. They all, if they do clone you at a certain age, I think that the, the clone can only be that age when they make the clone. So the they will grow facts. beyond that age. They just can't make them a baby again. No. But they're trying to create the fetus that grows into, you know, a normal <clears throat> cycle of being a baby, then a child, then an adult. Hey, respect to everybody that joined this podcast tonight. If you just join in, tonight's topic is about GMO and clones. So right now we are actually talking about a video that we just watched where God created babies in the lab. My, I have another question about the GMO food. 
Like, if we go into the supermarket, is this branded on there letting us know this is GMO letters? I don't think so, because then they'll lose business. The The whole thing is to keep you in the blind and you keep shopping the way you normally would shop. I'm sorry, what did I miss? Tonight's topic is about GMOs and clones. So at first we were talking about how they were genetically modifying vegetables and animals and body parts and all types of things. Oh my God. And now we're talking about a guy that had a breakthrough with creating two twin babies that are genetically modified to prevent the HIV disease. Mm. Now, did he do this on the basis of what they were talking about with those cats? Creating That's, what I'm, That's yes. what I'm thinking. So again, we're taking an uh, experiment that was uh, done on animals. Well, that's what they do with most of the stuff. Yeah. They test it out on animals first. But now you created twins of a duplicate. So so was, was the baby, because they said that the baby or whatever the specimen has to currently exist in order for them to make it. They take it from that, that individual's genes. Uh, I think they said something about uh, I, I've overheard or read something or listened before where it says it has the same like temperament uh, as close as possible eye color uh, appearance and stuff like that so again they made twins out of an existing baby so how does that so so they they not only made two I mean I made one they made two so it's two duplicates See, this is why I think that, this is just my theory, these unexplained situations where yes. people are freaking out, going crazy, and they're oh. doing stuff this, that, that you can't explain, I think these are the adult versions. If these uh, science projects grow to adulthood, I think that's what they have um, least un unleashed into the human population. And, and, and again, like I said, these individuals are lacking a soul. Um, so they, they don't, they're not feeling correct, even though they said they, they had the same temperament of, uh, of the individual that they created it from. So let's say if they took uh, uh, specimens from a, a murderer, so you're just creating another murderer. Yeah. yeah. Without yeah. conscience. Without that's not, conscience. That's not the way God intended for people to be, the earth to be populated. Oh, yeah, Tonya. I asked the question earlier. Do you think that these scientists and people are trying to play the position of God in creation? Oh, yes. Now, the only part, so I believe God arms certain people with uh, knowledge, make them knowledgeable so they can help the world. Um, yeah. I, I think with the whole, the genes and uh, uh, like, what do they call them? Stent cells and stuff like that. I think that, yeah, I think that is to enhance, you know, like uh, medical, like uh, make people well again and stuff like that. Provide medical somebody with, um, with, with, with sight they couldn't see or uh, give the uh, deaf the ability to hear, stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like that God is, the world is evolved enough and uh, man, he's trusting them with those type of gifts. But do I, like everything in this world, man has the, uh, in, the, the ability to uh, take things further than what they, what they should. So you give them an yeah. inch and they take a mile. So you yes. know if they could create a, um, an ear that gives to somebody, now they want to create the rest of the body that goes along with it. <laughs> and not only do they want to create the body, they want to put something within this uh, body where they can use it to their advantage. And you know, where we start talking about creating the super soldier and all this yeah. other yeah. type of stuff. Get it. Well, I think it's just like going in the kitchen to them. You know, if you're a cook, you go in the kitchen, you start cooking, you're like, oh, that tastes good. Let me try this. That's what they're doing. 
Mm. Very crazy. Before we go any further, here's a clip, a couple of clips from Two Chains on cloning today. Let's we have a just food. egg right here, but this egg didn't come from a chicken. It came from a mung bean. And then we have some chorizo made from chicken, except we don't have to kill a chicken to make this chorizo. So we actually take cells from an actual chicken and we make them think that they're inside the chicken growing. Without causing death, we can create actual meat. So we're gonna get started on this omelet here. Is that real butter? Or this do this have is anything real butter. Real? Again, this is from a bean. It's from a bean? Some of the uh, just chicken chorizo. There we have it. Jump in. Have a mung bean just egg with cultured chicken chorizo. You kind of just dissolve in your Two mouth. Chin. Mm -hmm. I ain't get a chance to chew it. Does it taste like an egg? It's, it's close. It's close? It's close. So here we have uh, this special salt. That's that called look. Column Nomok salt. So it's a sulfur salt. That's one of the main flavor components in egg. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, salt bay don't try to take that one. <laughs> Chains bay. <laughs> right now, we're really working to get the cost down to where we can be on par with the conventional that's out there. You ready for some fried chicken? <laughs> I guess so. And I'll go grab it. Boy, they're cloning some chicken in there. All right, and here we have our just chicken bites. This is cultured chicken from the lab, fried up with one of our dressings made from the yellow pea. That's our Chipotle ranch. None of it real. I mean, it's real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are real geniuses, right? Uh, there's a lot of smart people. Josh is going to come in and uh, try these. Two good Josh? Josh? You are Josh? <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the CEO and founder of Just. You need to taste your chicken. But I want you to understand, this chicken is not dead. What you mean, man? Mm. So the chicken that you're about to eat is not dead. Because why do you have to kill it? So where did you get this fancy idea from? I grew up in Alabama. I think you grew what up part? Birmingham. You got the Galleria Mall in Birmingham. The, you know the Galleria Mall? I used to eat at Chick-fil-A in the Galleria Mall. My family was pretty poor growing Eating up. Eating Chick-fil-A, you was poor. Once Black a week. and white poor is two different <laughs> things. All right, go ahead, though. So I, we, I see, man. You went through a lot. It, it is hard for regular people to eat good food. So I started to think, all right, we're going to use food to try to make meaningful change in the we'll world. Change the world. We've raised about a quarter billion dollars along the way. Wow. Are we talking most expensive? Is? Everyone from Jerry Yang, Mark Benioff, the wealthiest person in Asia, Lee Kai Shing, Heineken founding, early investors in Facebook, investors in this chicken. I mean, how does that how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like I want you to like that chicken most of all. You mind if I eat it along with you? Yeah. Okay. You know, capitalism can be used a lot to do a lot of bad things, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you approach it in the right way, it can be used to help. <clears throat> I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. Can be used to help people eat better all around the world. Wow. What's the cost of some of this stuff? The mayo right here is $3.49. Okay. Now the meat that doesn't require killing a chicken is a little bit more expensive. You tax them for that. It's in the hundreds or thousands of dollars right now. For what? For the chicken. Oh, why does it cost so much money? Yeah. So it's a pretty complex process. Yeah. We're in early stages. We're just making a little bit of it. Eventually, we want to get it below the cost of chicken. I love it. That's it. I love it. The most expensive mm. future, one day you're going to be eating air. You're going to love it from a plant, and everybody's going to mm. be full. Good chance. Thank you, man. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks for everything. Yo, hold on, little T, before you play the other video. Let's talk about this video. Would anybody um, like to jump in there first? Yes, I would. I'm going <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I think I saw the um, mystery about the whole Popeye situation. <laughs> this is why those people was out there acting the fool. Y'all put that mess out there and tested it with that Popeye's chicken. That's why those people was in there acting like crack addicts. <laughs> um, because they was addicted to this fake chicken. 
Right. Now, you know, you notice he said the chicken didn't have to die. Mm. Right? He said the chicken was still alive. It was still it was alive. Dead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is why but, people were acting a fool. he also said that he was poor growing up, so he wanted to make some food <laughs> that everybody can afford. How are you going to afford thousands or hundreds of dollars? Yes, because because right now is at the early stages of developing this process. No, once, once, once they get more and more, you know, it's going to be less, like he said. But then after we all gravitate to it and stop buying it, the price, price is going go up, up again. Right, but you heard all of the people he said that was invested in it, Heineken, all of these, you know, rich companies. Why exactly thousands of exactly. dollars right now? Because well, uh, the people with the money is paying for it. They money's no now, nothing. Uncle to Rob, right hold on. Let me let me say this though. I was thinking that the hundreds and thousands of dollars is being spent on real food, and the reason why he said people can afford. The clone chicken is because that's what they're really giving us in the in the poorer communities. Yeah, you know? but you also did. There, there's a distinction. They try to take away the real food away from certain neighborhoods and give us this yeah. fake food. Listen, mm -hmm. there's a certain distinction too, which he tried to show you. Two chains. What that guy considered poor to be is different from what people in the urban community community consider poor to be because as he was saying they was poor but that's why they was eating from chick-fil-a <laughs> people in the urban community that don't have money chick-fil-a is their, their first stop Chicken, no Popeyes. Yeah, exactly that's yeah, why the again you got yeah, you, mom, say, you, you wanted got to say so i was gonna say well he's saying that the food is expensive now that's but right now said. That those eggs, what did they say? It was two ninety nine. Right now, eggs is almost five dollars. By the end of the uh -huh. year, eggs is gonna be a dozen of eggs is gonna be twelve dollars. So damn near mm -hmm. a dollar a piece. So those eggs in a carton is gonna be competing with real eggs, and people are gonna pay for the price for the uh, product Break that eggs. is, that is yeah. left. Check it out. Yeah. So eggs they will made be out of fake beans. Uh -huh. Did he say? So, so did he say that product was called Just? Yes. Now yeah. I didn't. Now I've had. They have some products in the supermarket. In in, in, in Whole Food, I've had the I've had the Just eggs, and I ain't no no justice in that. Um, I ain't been the same probably since I ate those eggs. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm trying to tell y'all. <laughs> I've been thinking that it's that that uh, um the vaccine that gave me hives. Now that I'm hearing about these just eggs and stuff, it might be that. You know, it's 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 well, terrible. I mean, if you can't eat beans, then that could be your problem. So it, it could be, could be. And see, and again, I don't think this is this is gonna cause a problem. You, you know, you don't get this type of information the store, to the world, stuff, David. Who goes you, into the store and gets something that they don't even know nothing about? Just eggs. Wow. A black man that's trying to eat. <laughs> I was trying to find something. I I haven't had eggs in a long time. They said this was um an alternative, you know, plant plant based. They didn't tell me this was a plant that they created in a laboratory. Because I mean, I'm smart well, I mean, enough not to be an I'm, experiment. I'm going to interrupt you when you say plant based. You know that's not natural, so there is going to be some kind of I don't want to say chemical, but there it, it's well, not most. natural, but it's trying to make it to be like real food. So mm -hmm. there is going to be a change. So there's it, that whole vegan, not natural, whatever. If it ain't the real thing, there is some change to it. And it's oh, not that, even from the same so thing. So like the impossible burger? Oh, it's yes. impossible that that's a burger. I refuse exactly. to eat. Like don't eat it. Burger. You don't know what that is. That is that it was is impossible the new name. to create. That's why they call it impossible. Listen, that is the new name for mystery meat. They just changed the name yes. to make it more politically correct. Yeah. So I want to know if they say if the food is labeled organic, plant-based, and you know. Um, gluten, gluten free. Why can't it say G GMO on it? 
Some of them say some of them say GMO. FDA is not requiring GMO to be labeled. I mean, uh -huh. I guess there are some uh, people who are trying to make them label it, but if the FDA is not requiring it, companies are not going to do it. Yes, I'm FDA sorry. Who's going to make this ruling? This. Who's going to make this ruling? The same people who want one door on the school and um and teachers to be on with the I agree. That's Definitely. what I'm talking about. I just want to be clear about these these geniuses. And you notice all these people putting their money into this are the most wealthiest, wealthiest individuals in the world. These are the same individuals that after they destroyed this, 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 this earth, they plan on moving to the moon and Mars and other places like that. So after they give you all the fake food, fake food, <laughs> you're going to be down here left with that. And they're no, going to transport all the food. real food they're with them. They're fake food in outer space. So they're experimenting on others to see what, what how it works. Mm -hmm. So when they mm -hmm. to space, they have, they know where, where, what to do, what to take and what not mm -hmm. to take. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and, and I dare say, I'm going to go on, on a limb. Ain't none of us a part of this, uh, this, this, this show right now going to be able to afford, uh, 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 what they call it. A ship ticket. We're not gonna be um invited. You ain't gonna yeah, be able to make it out. There's if a ride you can go to Van Allen belt. Right. There's a ride you can go to space right now, but it costs millions of dollars if you want to go. If I had a million dollars, I'm not wasting my money to go somewhere I ain't been. Not, not out of this world. You only going up to turn right back around. That's it. Exactly. They can't have my money. I could do that. I can go up on a roof and turn back around. <laughs> uh, did, did we have everybody speak on a video? Would somebody else like to speak on a video that didn't speak? All right, then let's go into the next clip. If you like that one, you're gonna like this one. Hey, how you doing? Hi, I'm great. How are I'm you? I'm Two J. Hi, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. These are my Lane. kids. Hey, Hello. Speak, man, man. Hi, homie. And Hi, I'm Harmony. My name is Heaven. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Malayne. All right, come on this side, Halo. Halo, sit down. What? I mean, not Halo. I'm sorry. I am friendly. I know. I'm sorry. So, what do we have here? So, this is a cloned cat. <laughs> Get out of here. Yes. Okay, so far I have two questions. What's your question? So since it's a clone cat, is there like a real cat that looks like that one? There is. So there is an original cat, and that cat is still alive, and his owner decided he wanted to clone him. And now we have a cat that is genetically identical to the original cat. Okay, let's see the Are cat. You see him? Okay, right. wait. Do they say the same stuff? So that one's not real. Does it have a heart or anything? <laughs> he he has a heart. He's a whoa, normal whoa. cat. See that? See that? Just, see that? just like wow. any other cat. How I... did y'all do that? <laughs> so he's a special breed of cat called a Bengal cat. Called a really big cat. Yeah, he's a big boy and he's only nine months old. If she bites him, I'm gonna be very. Very bad. Very the, the, bad. the cat is not going to bite. I don't think we're the oh, cat. Oh, no. He's really sweet. He won't bite anybody or anything. Okay. So and if you wanted to clone Trappy, mm -hmm. you would take him to your veterinarian, and your vet would take a little small skin biopsy from his tummy. And then that sample comes to the Viagen Pets lab, and we grow millions of cells from the tissue. And the cells contain all of Trappy's DNA. Wow. And this owner has a four-year-old cat that looks just like this. Looks almost alike. So wow. some things that can be a little bit different in a cloned animal are the markings, because a clone is just an identical twin. But the shape of the face, the shape of the ears, the eye color, those are all things that are genetically linked, so are going to be very similar. So what Trappy's... What about the temperament? Like, how would they act? Yeah, temperament is something that is genetically linked. Isn't that amazing, guys? So what's this cat's name? His name is Benji. Benji. Yeah. That's Benji, right. y'all. Say, what's up to Benji? So, what's up, oh, Benji? Cat Benji. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. So if you were to clone, for instance, me, would I, would, like, the person think exactly like me and copy me or have its own mind? Anybody here? Ah! Come on, man. 
So give me a give me a roundabout number. How much would it cost to make a copy of Trappy? How much? So we're going to start with that preservation piece of storing the DNA, and that part is $1,600. Just to get his skin off his belly? Just, well, your vet's going to charge you a fee to take yeah. that skin, but, but then we charge $1,600 to grow these millions of cells from the skin and to store that. Okay. And there's an annual storage fee that's $150 a year. Okay. Now, when it comes time for cloning, mm. the dog cloning is $50,000. Mm. <laughs> cat cloning is twenty-five thousand. So this is a twenty-five thousand dollar cat right here. Twenty-five thousand dollar cat. Mm. What other kind of animals have you cloned? Goats and Whoa. sheep. Cows. Yeah. Wow. Um, and cows and pigs. We also clone horses. Are you? Um... We. Yep. <laughs> the horse cloning is eighty-five thousand. It was probably wow. hard to do the go because they like to look you in the face. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, cloning is hard. It's not everyone can do it. So that's one reason the price is so high. Y'all go rub the cat. Y'all go do that if y'all want to do rub the cat. Yeah, he's a sweet kitty. They now cat. Oh, no. Now you touch him. <laughs> I touched the cat. Yeah, he's soft cat like a little pillow or something. Sleep on the airplane. Meow. So say you have a girl cat, but you clone it. Can you make it a boy or does it That's just stay a good a girl? one, Heaven. You got That's some good questions. That's a good question. So no. Okay. Come on, so she can finish education, edu education, edu no. ed educating us in case one of y'all get bad. I just have another one of you guys. Yummy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, replace you. <laughs> Anything you want to ask, Halo? Yeah. What you want to ask? I'm a in a cage. So was that cat made like that at first? I have a question. Yeah, I the cat. I have a question. So if a goat walks up to your door, <laughs> like how would they act? Well, when you put two miles on your stomach, and there's one on one side question. and two on the other side, and then you see it just walk away, and then how do you look back on and the then other you look side, back and you look on that goat side, another goat just comes <laughs> back, and it's like. There's two? A clone cat. Well, cloning is hard. Oh, Tell you about it. I have a question. I always wanted a clone. When were you born? Four. Four? You got anything you want to say? No. Straight from the True family, the, the Chains family over here, where we've learned a process about cloning. So and they, cats. And cats. Like so if this comes up in school, you need to tell your science teacher that it's going down out here, OK? Mm. I won't, probably won't remember all this stuff you just told us. All right, that's a cut. That's a cut. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody want to jump right in and get in on their thoughts um, on the video? I think that baby is the smartest one out the whole bunch. <laughs> I'm with the baby. Uh, you see how... She, the, the baby said, if this cat bites me or something, I'm going to be very upset. So that baby done already detected something's wrong with that daggone cat. Right. Y'all can play foolish if y'all want to. Anybody else like to speak, Patsy? Uh, now, you know, the only people that are going to, with the amount of money that you got to put out, Someone that got money is gonna pay that money. Oh mm -hmm. no, I don't need no clone cat. I don't even. I love animals, but I don't want to take care of an animal for my own self. High five! High five! Uh -huh. Auntie, you wanted to say something. How it is. Well, if you you know you gotta worry about this dog or this cat coming back to you not right or whatever, like. Mm -hmm. Start scratching your eyes while you're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> like, just doing some crazy stuff in your house. So 25000 25, for the cat, 50000 for the dog, and then on and on. For the horse. Yes. So yeah. I wonder how much it costs us to clone a human then. million of dollars? 100000 Because somebody did it. 100000 Yes, Kiana. I believe they're doing it. Kiana. Sonia, you wanted to say something? Yes. I think I think I already met one of these clones. You call it a squatter. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah. What about it? 
I think I think that might be a clone. <laughs> the only way you can do something about that, don't you gotta like I don't know how how you kill a clone. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they probably said, doing in movies all the time in front of our face. We think we're watching a fake killing and we're seeing a real killing of a clone. Mm, mm, mm. Well, it'd probably be like a zombie. You gotta stab them in the head, kill them in the brain. Mm. Yeah, I was just thinking that. And that's why I don't watch those movies. <laughs> So my question for the video was, would you purchase a cloned animal? No. 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 No, you got to feed it real stuff. You can't just be giving them, like, star market dog food or cat food. No, you got to have expensive food to keep that thing alive. No, I'm all... So um, after all this information, do you guys believe that they're cloning people? I, I think they it. already did it. Yeah. Yes, they did it already. We I think know they're they did, doing it. They cloned I think the they're sheep, doing the it. first animal in 1996. So you know they cloned the baby by now. I think. Yeah, look I at think, those movies I mentioned back in the 80s, 80s and 90s, like them talking about they cloning people. Y'all know, y'all know that um that spot I said before where the UFOs and stuff they were storing all these. So called UFOs Area 51. I think yeah. this is where they're experimenting to make these clones and stuff. And then they run around here talking about their alien sightings and stuff like this. That sun done escape already. <laughs> they In my last escape, they just let them go. They let them um they let them loose in, in the population of humans. Now these things are probably breeding. With real How do you guys feel about the salmon and the tilapia and the food that we're eating that they put in the, under the categories? They put I, I, I believe that too. Well, I was kind of upset about that because I eat both those fishes. But you know, when you go in the supermarket, it says right here, farm raised. Yes, Maria. And let's talk about that. When 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 you went to BJ just recently, um, I asked for farm raised. You brought me back wild caught. It's a different. Because wild caught is the one you want. The farm but raised. But I don't know. No, no, that's wild caught is better than farm raised. Yeah, that's what you want. That's not what I want. <laughs> they don't already, they don't already, uh, what's the name? Got me hooked. <laughs> so like the farm raised corn fish. Yeah, I'm fine now because, you know, whatever they done did to me, they done already did it. And, and can I say this? How do you know you're really eating what you think you purchased? All they have to do is switch labels and tell you that's what you brought. Very true. Right, because right now I was very scared looking at that skinless chicken. It looks very crazy or whatever, and I'm pretty sure they got it in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. But we don't know about it. Those letters, if you ever buy butter letters, you can leave them in your refrigerator for like two weeks and they don't go bad. So those are probably the letters they made in the lab. And you know the ones, you know all these uh, defects where they got a call, have a recall on and stuff. That's probably the stuff that um, they done sent out before it was ready to go out, and that's why they they recalling and stuff like that. That's probably some more of that experimental food that just went bad. But what about the strawberry spliced with the fish? That was kind of crazy. Even the cabbage with the scorpion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that strawberry with the uh, fish. What if you have a fish allergy? Uh huh. Working daycare, and we had one child that was severely allergic to fish. So, what if that parent bought fish? I mean, bought those strawberries, right? That was mixed with the the fish. And didn't know. And, and didn't know. And you and, and, and the child is like, she couldn't be like, I didn't feed my child fish. What the hell is she breaking out with Alan Hives and, and, and getting oh, sick? Man. Now, I just thought about something else. Imagine it's your anniversary. You trying to surprise your wife. <laughs> she got some fish allergies, and you done went in there and made some straw or chocolate strawberries mm -hmm. out, of that, out of that. And now the surprise is she's in an emergency room on y'all's anniversary. Right. And, 
because you don't gave a son she can't have. Now, who do you sue in this case? The FDA for approving this mess. You will be divorced before you get money from them. Yeah. If you were able to be cloned, would you get cloned if you were offered the chance to? No. Uh -uh. That's how everybody feels? Nobody would get cloned? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't want no one sitting over there trying to beat me, competing with me. <laughs> you do that by yourself. That's right. Shoot, bad um, enough. People have twins and they look alike, but they act different. Just Shoot, think about the this. closest thing I want that looks like me is a twin, but I now, don't have a twin. What happens when this clone decides they have no more need for you? They want to do away with you. Uh, so I'm trying to tell you something might go wrong in their mental. And we're thinking that's normal. And they're really later on developing killing instincts. Single white female. Right. Was she a clone? She wanted to be. Yeah, see, again, like, um, you know, we probably already encountered people like this. We call them difficult bosses, spouses, girlfriends, um, boyfriends, siblings. Oh, they might have put these people out in front of us already. Um, because some of y'all go out to take the garbage out and come back different. Mm -hmm. so, well, in the heart and the nature of all of that, I'm going to say, remember, it's only one of you and that you are what you eat. This has been another episode of Think About It Thursday. I'm your host, G-Lace, and stay safe.